Panasonic HDX1500. Cinematic footage, bokeh, low light performance. Yeah, right. If you are here for the first time, my name is Pav, and here on my channel I talk about photography and video related gear, so if this is something that you are interested in, then please consider subscribing. This is not a review of this Panasonic HC-X1500 camcorder, but a follow-up video. I have already reviewed it last year, and, I, and the link to my full review is in the description below, and up here as well. In this video I wanted to answer a few questions a lot of you have been asking me and show you a few tricks how to get the most out of it. So I am going to talk about how to create cinematic look with it, how to shoot with nice bokeh, how to match the footage from this camera and any other cameras together, it's a low light performance or lack of it and can you get gimbal like handheld shots with it. So let's do this. Cinematic look. What is the cinematic look? I find it very hard to define this as it means different things, different things to different people. I guess to me, it means that the footage looks more like in the movies, more like shot on film and not with actually a video camera. So how do you use this camera to get that elusive cinematic look with? I think that adding a little bit of motion to your shots is the first step. Even if it is a handheld pan, move forward or very slow zoom, any motion will help to add that something extra to your footage. Also filming at higher frame rates and then slowing it down always makes any video looks a bit more slicker. Not always practical or good for every type of filming to go slow-mo, but if you want to, if you want that cinematic look, slowing it down often helps. There's very little that you can do to adjust how your picture looks in camera. You have fully auto or you can add very basic color profiles that can be modified in camera in any way. I don't think fully auto is that bad, but for more control over how you can shape the look of your footage in post, I'd use CineD profile. The CineD is just a little bit flatter and easier to push a little bit harder when color grading in, in post. You can actually correct these basic uh, color profiles in the camera, but in my experience using it, the adjustments are very clunky and confusing even, uh, hard to adjust and to get specific. Look, yes, in my opinion, actually it is easier, way easier to do color correcting, adjusting in post. You don't need to be color grading expert, but adding simple pre-made color styles loots to your footage can make a world of difference instantly. Every video editing software comes with some presets installed, but getting some extra free loots to play with is always a good idea, and there's a plenty available for free. And there's a link below in the description to 25 free bundle packs you can get today. Not mine, but very handy. The only advice I can give you is that applying loot is not always enough, and sometimes you have to tweak individual clips, brightness or shadows as well to match the look better to each other. It all really depends on the type of shot, and not all loots will suit every type of footage. So to summarize this, you'll need to color tweak the footage from this camera in edit to get away from a very video look this camera delivers. There's not much you can do in camera, that's how it is, so you can't really cheat in the camera, you have to do it in edit. Is it possible to create cinematic footage with it? Yeah, absolutely yes, in post. A lot of you have been asking me if you can get really blurred backgrounds, bokeh, with, with this camera. The answer is, Yes, you can, but you have to understand how it works. With photography or cinema prime lenses, you open the aperture wide, and when focusing on your subject, you're gonna get dramatic fall off in sharpness. Closer you are to your subject, and more distance there is between your subject and the background, you get more blur or bokeh. Here, even though the lens is f1.8 wide open, you can only open it that wide in the widest zoomed out state, and it's literally impossible to blur the background shooting wide with this. But once you start zooming in, you get something called zoom compression. The perspective gets squashed, making it look like the background is way closer to your subject than it really is, and it blurs, giving you that shallow depth of field. In a nutshell, 
To get any bokeh here with this camera, you will need to zoom in. Further you zoom in and closer you get to your subject, more blur background you're gonna get. Simple, not always very practical if you're shooting in a small spaces or bigger objects, but that's the only way you can get bokeh with this built-in built in zoom lens. Although you will never get super shallow depth of field prime lenses can get, it does work and the stabilization this camera provides is really good enough to get steady shots handheld at the far end of the crazy long zoom this camera has. Matching the footage from this camera to any other camera, as I have mentioned before, there is very little you can do in camera to change how video this camera records looks. This can only be done by matching all the cameras to this camera or entirely in post. All mirrorless and DSLR cameras, as far as I know, have adjustable color profiles. You can choose a basic standard profile, adjust saturation and contrast to match the Panasonic picture as close as possible. But using different lenses, different lighting conditions will hugely affect how the image looks. Matching the look of footage this camera delivers, even with other Panasonic cameras like Panasonic GH5 and even using Cine D profile on both will always be a challenge. And I really think that it, it is easier to match it in post. I'd use LUTs pre-made, bought or free as a starting point. I use personally Adobe Premiere, but this is the same in most of editing packages. After assembling the shots from two or more cameras together, together with footage from this, I'd add an adjustment layer above all of the shots. Add the loot or my own color adjustments to the adjustment layer. So it adds it to all the clips in one go. And then go to each and individual shot to tweak brightness, contrast, saturation, highlights to match them to each other as closely as possible. Possible. I'm not saying that it is a simple process and it certainly takes a while to master and get used to, but it is still the best method to get shots from different cameras, including this, matching all together. If you are using this camera to stream with in a multi-camera setup with other cameras, other brands, uh, I'd try to tweak standard profile of other cameras to match as closely to Panasonic as possible. But bear in mind that this might vary a lot depending on the filming conditions. And if you move your setup around from place to place, this might need retweaking every time. Yeah, there's no simple solution to that. Yes, this camera is not brilliant in low light. It's a fact, but it's not designed to, to film in a very low light. It's designed to film in controlled light environments. So if you were to, to create low light environments, you would use the lights to compensate for the lack of resolution that small sensor or lack of light sensitivity that small sensor delivers. So it's not a problem if you can't control the light. In this room, this is a pitch black room, and I'm actually filming with two of these small LED lights. As you can see, it's dark. I'm actually filming with a7 III, which is a uh, Sony a7 III, which is actually very good in low light. And this is what this camera can, can deliver in the, exactly the same scenario, in the same situation, the same room. A small sensor is the problem here and the footage gets really mushy when the light is not sufficient. So filming with it in a badly lit rooms or at night is not really an option if you want good quality picture. It is its limitation but LED lights are really cheap now. You can easily compensate with artificial light to make this camera work better indoors or even filming people close close to you outside, like interviews, like interviews, for example. Yes, I know it's not always that simple, but in my opinion, if you need low light performer, this camera might not be for you. I found it okay for what I am doing when I can create the low light look or pretend it is a low light, but in fact use multiple light sources to fight the camera's limitations. And finally, a lot of you out there wanted to know more about this camera's stabilization. Can you get gimbal-like shots with it? For getting handheld tripod like static shots, it works extremely well. Even when zoomed in all the way, the stabilization has to work really hard when you abuse that zoom. So you have to bear in mind that there are limitations to how stable you can get the footage handheld. It does the job, however, well, but I don't think you're ever gonna get gimbal-like shots walking with this. 
Totally usable for handheld shooting when you don't have the tripod with you and better than a lot of other cameras that I have used before. I like to add a little movement to the handheld shots by just leaning in or panning with my body, especially effective when filming slow motion shots. You have to bear in mind that too much sudden movement and the stabilization is going to try to correct it, resulting in a natural looking movement. Anything smooth and slow, fine. Anything jagged, rough, it's not gonna work. So you're never going to get that gimbal-like shots straight out of the camera. But certainly it is possible to add some motion to your shots, handheld panning and, and leaning forward or whatever. Slowing down the footage will reduce small shakes, but just like with everything you do, more you do it, better results you go on, you're going to get. There are ways to stabilize footage in post as well, even walking shots, but to be honest, get a gimbal. They are not that expensive anymore, and gimbal can really be a game changer if you do need to move the camera smoothly and get those smooth moving shots. And this is it from me. I hope this video was helpful in any way. If you if you got this far and you and you like it, then please give me the, the thumbs up. Check out my full review of this camcorder and please consider subscribing. Show your support and buy me a coffee. The link is below and check out my affiliate links while you're there as well. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Not mine, but very handy <laughs> the, with, with this camera. How, you're gonna get dramatic fail off in sharpness. But, but once you start low light, Every 